Hello and welcome to today's League of Legends Roundup, where we're going to cover the games that took place in Worlds 2022 Play-Ins Day 2, as well as sneak peek what's going to happen tomorrow in Play-Ins Day 3. Um, down in the description, you'll see three links, Twitter, Discord, YouTube memberships. Twitter, follow me there. I post all my links there for my videos. Discord, join me. I also post my links there under the new uploads channel, and we BS about League as the games go on. Um, there are definitely regional biases in the chat, um, but outside of that, it's pretty pretty tame. Um, lastly, is YouTube memberships. $3 supports me. $10, you support me, and you get extra content, like the video that comes out after this one, where I give my predictions on what will happen in tomorrow's games. I give my sneak peek as part of this series of Roundup, where I, you know, I have another board, and it'll have all the games for tomorrow on it. And I'll just briefly go over them and not pick my winner. And then uh, I pick my winners in the extra content. So um, if that interests you, that's at a $10 tier as well as American football, NFL, fantasy football content. So Fanatic and DFM. Um, so what were the takeaways from today? Uh, Fanatic, a little messy today. DFM definitely gave Wonder a run for his money in top lane. Eevee got a solo kill on him um, in the early game. However, Humanoid really took over, uh, going 7-0 and 6, 37% of Fanatic's damage, upset 5-1 and 7. Yaharung, 4-3 and 1 for 28% of DFM's damage. Utapon, 4-3 and 3. So this was a lot closer than it needed to be. Um, there is, I mean, honestly, although Fanatic is 3-0 and, and um, well, what, they're the only 3-0 team left, right? Well, no, DRX are 3-0. Yeah, so DRX are 3-0. Um, yes, they're. A lot of games. So DRX 3-0, Fnatic 3-0. Um, I will say Fnatic does not look as clean as DRX does right now. Um, today's game being a good example of that. I feel like it's clear that if you go to top lane, you might be able to have a better chance of winning against Fnatic. Um, Hilly came in and Hilly inted. Honestly, they looked better with Rux in the lineup than they did with Hilly. Um, I mean, it remains to be seen how long that was going to last. Obviously, yesterday Fnatic... Um, played EG, so, you know, take that for what you will, and Chief, EG and Loud, um, so this was a lot closer than it needed to be too, and it's kind of scary for a long time if you are a North American fan, um, EG wins Jojo Pune 5-3 and 9, 26% of team's damage, inspired 7-1 and 12 on a Maokai, um, Ro Robo 4-5 and 6, 34% of Loud's damage, Croc, Four, four, and six. So Loud looked really, really good. Now, honestly, as a person that tries to be as unbiased as possible, and I like to think I don't have bias at this event, um, a minor region winning like CB Law would have been pretty cool. Um, another game, especially over a major region. I don't even care if it's EG. Um, it's just a matter of I think that you know that region has a lot of viewership. It'd be good if that region got more hype than it does right i think it deserves more hype there are more fans there and loud being a big organization it'd be really really interesting to see what would happen what the trickle down effect would be but in this game eg just beat them i mean it was sloppy but they got it done um there was one point where vulcan and inspired went 2v3 to stop a baron and came out ahead maokai is broken and another takeaway is vulcan is still a little scuffed um not in a good spot, not in a good spot. Honestly, EG, even after this one, and we'll get into that more in a minute, um, it's not looking good for EG. Um, Saigon Buffalo and Isaris, uh Shogun, 16-2-6, getting the second pentakill of the tournament. Yes, two days, two pentas. Um, on an Aphelios, 33% of the team's damage. Hazmed, 6-2-8 in top lane. Grell, once again, leading the way for Isaris, going... 3, 6, and 4, 27% of Isaris' damage, and Seiya 1, 3, and 2 in mid. The veteran doing all he can, but really, there was nothing stopping Shogun from going off. Saigon Buffalo just beat the crap out of Isaris. Um, it's really Growl versus the world in this one. It's really hard to tell how Isaris really is outright um, with this going on because, I mean, is he is Growl just getting all the... Re, all the you know, draft resources and, and and resources and game and things like that. Obviously, you can see it, but at the same time, you know, what do the numbers really, really indicate? Um, 
when it comes to, to resources. Because you think about it, in this game, actually, um, ADD played Zillion top lane. So a secondary support, right? Um, that freed up Grell. And Grell was not on Graves. He was on Hecarim, um, I believe. He was on Hecarim. We're seeing a lot of Graves in Hecarim. That's the meta, um, which is going to help some teams. T1, Damwon being two that really jumped to my mind right now. Um, and it's it's giving Isris a chance with Grell, but at the same time, it's too much to overcome. Saigon Buffalo just just dismantled Isris in this one. Um, DFM and Chief, definitely the toughest game of the day to predict. This one was very close um, on paper. However, not on the rift. DFM really took it to Chief. Um, Yaharung, 5-1 and 5, 29% of DFM's damage. Utapon, 7-2 seven, and 7. Reyes, 2-4 and 5, 25% of Chief's damage. And Arthur, 5-4 four, and 4. Um, Arthur, similar to the Growl situation, is trying his damnedest. However, Chief is a better team on paper than Isris. I mean, Reyes has not looked very good at all at this tournament. Actually, pretty piss poor. Um, the bot lane's been... Hmm. Uh, it's, it's not good, but Tally today played very, very, very bad. Um, there was a moment in this game where Utapan is on Kesa and he gave... Um, is it either Kesa or Kalista? Either way, he gave... Uh, Tally, quite the shimmy in bot lane, and Tally on the Seraphine had no, no, like, he had no idea what to do. He had no idea what to do. So it's really out of words. Like, to describe it, and if you saw the play, you're like, wow, I don't have words for what just happened in bot lane. Like, I can't believe Utapan was able to make those moves happen, and I can't believe that Tally did not do his job in that play. So, um, Chief are just imploding, uh, so expect my algorithm, at least as of right now, my algorithm is going to reflect that next year Chief is going to be, I mean, LCO is going to be nerfed a little more, I think. Um, EG and beyond, um, EG win, soundly. Uh, impact 4, 1, and 2, 36% of EG's damage. JoJo Pune, 6, 3, and 9 in mid. Waco, 0, 2, and 2, 35% of beyond gaming's damage. Husha, two, three, and three. Uh, this was dominant. Uh, Kennen, I believe, for impact, very, very good uh, game for him. Really took it to Laikai in top lane and really uh, did his job throughout. Jojo Pune on, I think, the Silas also did very well. Um, at some point, they took Jojo's shoes. I don't understand that. I think it was kind of bogus, something about, I don't know, it was just some rule about not wearing Crocs, I guess on stage or something um but they yet let players wear sweatpants so it's just one of those things like oh well we want you to look a certain way and it's like well you're letting them wear sweatpants i would say sweatpants are pretty relaxed i mean it's just ridiculous St something stupid that i realized they had a delay of they had a delay because of this like what kind of crap is that um so EG win these two games going into it yesterday. I was saying they need these wins. This is a big deal. And it was kind of scary because it was like, oh, geez, the way they played against Fnatic was very bad. They didn't play well in this one. But Beyond Gaming, after yesterday doing so well, did awful today. Minji, I mean, I'm not mentioning Minji for a reason, right? He really didn't do all that much. DRX and Saigon Buffalo. Um, DRX win. Deft going 3 0 4, 32% of DRX's damage. Zeka 5 1 and 2. Um, Froggy, 0, 2, and 3, 31% of Saigon Buffalo's damage on a Galio. And then we had Shogun, 2, 2, and 0 in bot lane. I think it was, um, Ezreal versus Zaya. DRX just slowly beating Saigon Buffalo. And it wasn't really, actually, Saigon Buffalo did not play a very, very hectic game like we've come to see out of Saigon Buffalo so far in this one and the, in the other one, kind of messy games where, um, I won't lie, like a long, uh, uh, too long of a portion of these games were close. Like even the one against Isris, like they beat the crap out of them, but that early game was still messy. And then, then this one, they toned it way down, and I think they tried to play DRX at DRX's game, and that was a mistake. Um, and it always is a mistake. If you are not as good as the other team on paper, you need to, um, need to, you need you need to step it up. You need to get freaky. 
Uh, I think they played Aurelia in top lane, and that did not go that well. Um, Juhan playing for DRX, which he stands out in the last game of the day. But Juhan in instead of Pioshik. They won yesterday with Pioshik. I hate that they keep going back and forth between junglers. They need to commit. Um, splitting scrims at an international event like this is so sus. I mean, people say it worked here, it worked there, but how many times has it not worked? Like, it's just such a sus move. Uh, Mad Lions and RNG. RNG win. Gala goes 5-0 and 7, 28% of the team's damage. Way was absolutely disgusting on the Graves, going 8-1 and 9, dominating this game. He was crushing it. He, I think he had two items before anybody had their Mythic. I think that's what I heard, um, which is damn incredible to think about, right? Um, Armut, 3-2 and 4. Uh, 31% of Mad's damage. You know it's bad when Armut is leading the way. We talked about this during uh, the preview, actually, that their playoff numbers indicated that Armut was doing the most work, dealing the most damage, was okay with a KDA, like his numbers were okay, and uh, it was like, okay, why is he the one doing all of this? Um, after Mad Lions played so well yesterday, um, today, I mean, and it wasn't, it wasn't close. It wasn't close. Niski did not do well. Unforgiven did not do well. Um, El Yoya 2-2-4 two, two, and four as well. Um, El Yoya tried on the trundle, but that's just not enough in this meta. meta El Yoya needs to be able to uh, do a little bit more, give him a champion that can do a bit more. Um, I mean, didn't expect Mad Lions to win this game, but at the same time, I would have preferred it. I think in this one, I went 8-0. No. My predictions. I'm trying to think. Well, these were easy ones, right? I know I had DFM over Chief. I think I did have DRX over Saigon Buffalo. If I didn't, I went 7-1. and one. Um, I'm going to check back in it before I do my members-only video, but that just popped up in my head. I think I went 8-0. No. These are just games that were pretty easy and self-explanatory going into it. Uh, IW and DRX to finish us off. Zika, absolutely disgusting. Zaka, sorry, not Zika. Zika plays for um, IG, uh, IG top laner. Zeka. On the Akali, 12-0-8, absolutely disgusting, disgusting, disgusting. The Akali must be banned against Zekka if you don't have something for him. Obviously, IW did not really have much going for them anyways going into this one. That's without a doubt. I think anybody that is not on, like, that's not doing something that they shouldn't be doing, like, I mean, I'm out of words for a lot of this stuff. Like, a lot of this stuff today is just like, that was disgusting. So, Juhan, 5-1-13 and 13 on the Maokai. He got Ma Maokai both games, by the way. OP pick, that has to be banned. Um, Holy Phoenix, 7-7-1 seven, seven and one on the Callista. Died a lot, but at least he went down fighting, unlike yesterday where he lost going 8-1-4 and four or something. Um, Starscreen, 0-1-3 oh, and three with his best performance of probably the entire tournament. Um, Orn. He died with like no time left, pretty much. Barrel chasing him down in the jungle. Uh, this was just a this was over for a long time, and and uh, DRX kind of drug it out. Um, we'll see what tomorrow brings. And uh, speaking of that, now on to the sneak peek for tomorrow. Okay, now for tomorrow's slate of games, we have uh, Loud and Fnatic starting us off. They've never played against each other. Robo versus Wonder is the matchup I want to watch. Robo leading the way for Loud yesterday against who? EG, right? Um, so Robo was the key player for them in the loss. Wonder was the key detriment for Fnatic when they beat DFM. That was what kept DFM in it. So if Robo can show up against Wonder, maybe he can 1v9. I think that's Loud's real best shot tomorrow. Um, sure, I think that Tin owns if he gets a Zoe. I don't know why anybody would give him a Zoe again, but if he gets it, maybe. But I really, I don't see it otherwise. Mad Lions versus Saigon Buffalo. Never have played against each other before. Unforgiven versus Shogun is what we want to watch. Two young AD carries that need to continue to perform very well. We saw Shogun with his pentakill we, that we just went over. But Unforgiven did not show up at all against RNG, right? So, you know, mixed bag. Typical, right? That's typical of an international event for a young player. Unforgiven does great yesterday, going 14-1-1 against IW. But this is not Istanbul. This is not... That was RNG that you just played to, uh, today and Saigon Buffalo tomorrow. Um, so that, that'll be a key matchup. If you can keep Shogun under control, 
Uh, Saigon Buffalo definitely are really, really weakened. Um, Hosmed can do work, but at the same time, I think that uh, Shogun is definitely the win condition. Beyond and DFM, this one is an important one for both of them, trying to get to the third, fourth slot. Um, they played before Worlds 2021 last year in play-ins. Day three, DFM would win. Uh, EV going 10-0-6 on an ergot. Um, we know EV's ergot is a thing. Uh, everybody does, right? Um, EV struggled a lot this uh, tournament, more than arguably anybody else. And no better time than pull the to, no better time to pull the ergot out than again somebody did last year, right? Uh, Waco versus Utapan is what we want to watch. Utapan, obviously, I went over how he completely shimmied Tally earlier, um, and I think Waco is a player that kind of needs to step it up for Beyond Gaming. Uh, coming into this tournament, a lot of people were talking him up as one of the better eighty carries in the PCS, and honestly, he has not done much of anything to really impress me so far. Um, where Utapan, Utapan we know as a uh, commodity that is a, a solid player, right? So Waco needs to step it up and at least look solid in this one. EG and Chief never have played before. Vulcan versus Aladoric is what we want to watch. Uh, well, what I want to watch. Um, Vulcan, and speaking of stepping it up, Vulcan needs to play the game at a better level if EG wants any shot after this. And I mean... Even in their best of three, when they have to play Matt or Saigon Buffalo, like they need to figure it out. Vulcan needs to figure it out. And no better time than against LCS Light in Chief. Uh, Aladoric, kind of sus so far, like the rest of Chief. So he needs to win the bot lane and help Reyes out, just like Vulcan's trying to help Kaori out. RNG and Isaras, this is going to be an. Um, this is the sort of game where you could see, like, I don't know. RNG really get freaky with draft. I think they could see this as a glorified scrim. They've never played before, but Way versus Grell is what we're going to watch. I mean, Way dominated today, and Grell is all Isris has. So, with that in mind, um, say a prayer for Isris in the comment section. Chief and Beyond Gaming never played before. Arthur versus Husha is what we want to watch. Two carry oriented junglers. Husha really hasn't stepped it up all that much in this. Um, in this event, similar to Waco, I mean, Minji was the one who did work for Beyond Gaming when they won on day one, won yesterday, right? So these two guys are the other guys that people talk about. Like these are the ones that did, did a lot of the, a lot of the heavy lifting and haven't done much. So this is a winnable game for Beyond. So they need to win it, just like this one. Um, this is Beyond Gaming's big day. If they can win both these games. You're pretty much guaranteeing yourself a. I think they might actually be guaranteeing themselves a shot at um, going into the best of three segment of uh, plans. After that, RNG and IW, another scary, scary situation. So they played at MSI in May. RNG won both games. Way, between the two games, Way went a combined 16, 16, 2, and 19. And he's feeling himself after today's game. So, um, Ferret might need to uh, really, maybe they triple, maybe you triple ban. I mean, you get the Graves out. Get the Graves out. Simple as that. Um, Gala and Holy Phoenix, both players not really, um, I mean, like I said, Gala was, the, was one of the key contributors for RNG success today against Mad Lions. But I think we can all... Um, we can all agree that we expect a little more out of Gala so far. So, uh, with that in mind, this is probably a good moment for him to get online. Holy Phoenix, I mean, one game goes 8 1 and 4, or 8 2 and 4, and then goes 7 7 and 1. Um, he is the win condition. He is the win condition. So, it's Gala versus Holy Phoenix. And then lastly, Isaris versus DRX. Um, Seiya versus Zekka is what we want to watch. Zekka obviously being so dominant on the Akali. Seiya has been around the block, so I would hope he has a counter to at least keep it close. So, um, 
with that in mind, I mean, I went over that last one really fast because I think I said a lot of what, I, what I've already said, I said for RNG and Isaris would have been said for DRX and Isaris. So thank you for watching this video. Um, become a YouTube member, follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, comment down below with your opinions on how the uh, plans are going so far. Um, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I appreciate you watching my content, and uh, thank you for swinging by.